to meet our absolute star guests and we, uh, Beatty and I can't tell you how honoured we were to be able to secure the services of this man. He has been named the rally driver of the millennium and rightly so. He is an absolute total legend and that's why there's been so many people queuing up here to get autographs and to, uh, to meet this wonderful man. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Roll, twice world rally champion. Good evening. Uh, first of all, it's, it's an honor for me that I'm invited to be back here in Northern Ireland. I uh, was only one time here in '84, and in this time I was a little bit under pressure. I couldn't enjoy the country, but tomorrow I'll be doing it. I am sure it will be a nice day. Walter, we'll be talking tomorrow night in, in some length about your last visit, but tonight we're going to concentrate on your kind of Porsche's interests over the year. And we're calling this Deja Vu Motorsport, and it's very appropriate because your first road car was a Porsche, and your first rally win was in a Porsche. That's right, yeah. I had a, a brother who, who was 10 years older, and he owned a Porsche, and when he was 21, I was 11, and on Sunday, the parents had always take the small one with you. And uh, I was sitting in the back of the 356 when he was uh, traveling around with his girlfriend. He was very angry, of course, that I was in the back. <laughs> but, uh, but he always said to me, listen, wait until you can buy a good car. And a good car is only a Porsche. That is the reason I am a big Porsche fan from, from the beginning of my life. And I said, okay, I will do it. And finally, when I was 21, I bought also my first uh, 356, a used one, of course, but I was very happy with this. And then, uh, in 1969, I had a friend who was a skier, like me, and he said, you, are, you must be a, a rally driver. I never have seen a, a, a guy who has so much feeling about a car like you, and you must do it. He said, listen, I have no money to be a rally driver. He said, if it doesn't cost anything for you, and we're using my Porsche, would you drive it? I said, yeah, okay, then I would do it, if it costs nothing. And it was a, a, a rally for a European Championship, and people like Munari was on the, on the start line. And finally, I, I was on every stage, or nearly a minute faster than everybody else, and that was the start of my rally career, because after this rally, I get immediately an offer from Ford Germany to be professional. It means I have in my life not spent 500 euros for motorsports. <laughs> And that, as you all know, is certainly unique. Um, 
But you, you, of course, you, you've, you've uh, rallied for Fiat, for Audi, for Opel, and Porsche. And uh, it's kind of your career did the, the full circle, really, because you, you ended up back with Porsche and, and did quite a lot of development work for them. Yeah, uh, finally, when I, in 87, my rally career was finished, and the, uh, the Audi people asked me if I can develop all the race cars for Audi. They said, okay, I will do it. And I have done it from 87 until 92. And in 92, uh, it was four-wheel drive forbidden in motorsport. And Audi said, we have to develop a new Audi A4 front-wheel driven car. I said, no, not with me. That is, it's not a race car for me, a, a, a front-wheel driven car. And they said, I will finish my job. It's enough for me. I stop and I stay at home. And two weeks later, the CEO from Porsche, Mr. Wiedeking, was from me and said, listen, if you want, you can be our, our brand ambassador and you can be the head of, of our uh, test drivers. And for every us a brand, I would say no, but for Porsche, I have to say yeah. And now I'm 26 years with Porsche. As I say, tomorrow night we'll be talking about all the other aspects of your career, your days with Audi, your days on Pines Peak and all those, those wonderful achievements and Le Mans and racing in, in the uh, American series. But, and indeed, if we'll go into some depth about your visit here, the, the sensational visit when you won uh, the Ulster Rally. But that's tomorrow night. Just to, to finish our little chat tonight, um, Porsche still, uh, motorsport is so uh, essential to their marketing. And of course, we saw them come back into LMP1, absolutely destroy Le Mans. Uh, and now, even this year, when they've retired from LMP1, they've won Le Mans again in their GT class. Yeah, I think that is, uh, it's typical Porsche. In 1908, it was the last victory in Le Mans, and then it was a rest until 2000, 2015. And uh, that is a good thing. The engineers in Porsche, they have a special spirit that in Weissach, which is our development department. And, and these people, if you talk to them, they have only Porsche in his head. And I think that the result is that Porsche was so successful in, in motorsport. Even uh, this year, if you look back the last two years, it, for me, it was a, a little bit uh, a disappointment that uh, 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 Ford, GT40 was winning, a Ferrari was winning, and the 911s have been always somewhere behind. And after last year, when Bosch stopped with the uh, WRC, they said, next year we want to win Le Mans in the 911. And they did it. That means, that shows that people in Bosch are really motivated to make motorsport. They're an absolute legend, of course, 9-11's here in Ireland. We've still, the, the entry tomorrow is about at least a third of the cars are Porsches. Uh, and, of course, the very famous rally drivers here tonight who had great success in Porsches. We have seen a few little photographs creeping out of uh, a 9-11 in rally guys. Do you know anything about that, Walter? Yeah, let's say uh, when I was in, in, it was in 1981, I signed a contract for Mercedes. I signed it uh, in November of 1980, and in December of 1980, I was without car because Mercedes closed the sport department. And at this time, I remember the, the one member of board from Porsche was phoning me and said, "Listen, now we are able to get you a contract because the money you get from Mercedes and the car you get from us." That was uh, in, in 81, I was first time sitting in a proper 911 uh, works car. It was in the Rally San Remo. At, and this year, the Audis have been uh, uh, the, the new revolution in motorsport with four wheel drive. But uh, I was really motivated in, 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 in 1981 to beat them. And I was really on asphalt, I was uh, much faster on the gravel. I was even on the same level. And on the last gravel stage, I retired with a half shaft was broken. But that was a point, maybe if I had not this problem, uh, Porsche would stay a little bit uh, in the rally sport. But then they said, okay, 
we have too much uh, development in direction motor, uh, race, racing cars. We, we stopped with, with rally driving. And that was a pity for me that I, I am now 25 years with Porsche, but I never was an official uh, driver in an in a, in a official rally car, which was still, after all my race experience, the big love was always rally driving, not, not race driving. Walter, um, it's B.G. Crawford who did all the work and all the badgering to get you here. And uh, where's B.G.? Take a bow, B.G. It's just been an absolute thrill. Uh, it's only the start of the weekend. Deja Vu Motorsport is all about mingling with the fans, mingling with the fellow competitors. And I know, I hope you're going to have you've a little bit more time uh, on this visit to do just that. And as you say, see the scenery. It's absolutely brilliant to have you here, Walter. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you very much.
Welcome to the Titanic Digital Gunfights. Uh, for those who are not already initiated, this is a great parade of historic cars and historic parade cars. They don't come any greater than number one, the wonderful Mr. Roger Roy from Germany, ladies and gentlemen, twice world champion and an absolute honour to have him here. Fabulous motor car and uh, we're very grateful for you. Don't need it for the weekend. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely fabulous to be here with uh, uh, Walter, world rally champion, and uh, you know he's everybody's hero in this country. So he is as far as rallying is concerned. Uh, we, we remember his exploits very fondly in the works battle, the previous battle. And this is time. This is to uh, Belfast. 1984, that's a few years ago, Walter. Yes, that's right, 84 years ago, and I pressed a little bit of November, and that's the series, and I'm looking forward today to, to get all this impression new I have. I'm really, really glad to be here, to have a chance to make all this nice roads without pressure, you know. But see, I think we use it as uh, competition and we never are open for nice uh, things. Today, I'm talking about good so, yeah. 1984, as you say, you remember a little. We remember a lot. You made a big, big impression in this country. Uh, and I'm getting all kinds of lovely stories coming in. This morning, uh, Russell Brooks's uh, navigator texted from England and he said they timed you off the line. So you went out of sight on a stage, and they expected, you know, a second of it. You were 15 seconds quicker. Yeah, that's right. You know, since 45, this was a big revolution in the, in the rally sport, and uh, the traction was so absolutely unbeatable. You could uh, accelerate from 
from 0 to 200 under 10 seconds. And even on a gravel road, we, we accelerate from 0 to 160 kilometers in 6.9 seconds. That's unbelievable. Total revolution. Chris, it was meant to be really a testing exercise, wasn't it? It was the first test, really, and, and, it, and it, uh, all the people told me, you have not to take care on the car, just push it as hard as possible. We want to stay, uh, to, to know if you, the car stays in one piece. And I was pushing absolutely 100%. And it maybe really makes a good impression for the spectators. Four minutes ahead by the end of the event. That was a, a big, big margin. Yeah, especially I had no notes. I was going without practice, you know. I never had seen the roads before. It was a big challenge, I tell you. I think we need to handicap you that way. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Brilliant to see you here, Walter. We, we, we call this digital motorsport because four years ago, now, 2014, that was, we were right back here, this very building where we honored Paddy's 50th Monte Carlo rally ring. So that's really what sparked off all this. And we seem to have hit a little vein because this digital thing is bringing people together, beautiful cars together, not a competition, it's just an opportunity to see them. Oh, yes indeed. Sorry, sorry. Did you let them stay out of the day after? <laughs> Have a night. And did you hear that? It's not a competition. Okay? It's not a competition. And we're going to ask just a question. Perfect time. We'll put a lot more out of the chart. The water's about to head off, so are we, are we on timing? Clock? Good. I wait, well, my thing is to um, drive up the, uh, the photographers. Okay, a bit of ours, like, for these couple of the Also the very famous pool driver, and we don't know what, which one's looking more nervous, whether it's Paddy or Lori, but uh, they're coming up to the start line. And this is a uh, clock in the mini as well. Where can we get the mini from? Well, that's uh, right that's there, the number he wrote. Paddy, very welcome. Now, it was, as Plum was saying, it was uh, four years ago that we celebrated your 50th anniversary of winning the Monte Carlo Rally. And here we are, four years on, with this fantastic array of cars. And it must be lovely for you as well, just to, to have so many memories of, of the cars that are here today. Yes, the only thing wrong is I don't like being second place behind the bloody German. <laughs> Politically correct as ever is our Paddy. But I have a funny feeling that will not last long on the road. Oh, he told me not to push him too hard. And I've got a wonderful co-driver, Rory, who's been with every great driver in the world and he's about to be not. <laughs> well, do you, as, as all good drivers, you've got to listen to your co-driver. Absolutely, and I've been listening to the wife for 51 years, so <laughs> that you should, right? <laughs> yes, but do you ever pay attention? That's the difference. <laughs> well, as, as you say, I've got Rory beside you, and Tom is saying, it's not a competition, Paddy. It's wonderful. I'm looking forward, I hope to see the scenery, I'm looking forward to the lovely parts of the country and what to Enjoy your day, Rory, enjoy your day as well. Yeah, I'm out of this one here. So, uh, like to <laughs> And her husband. Good morning. How lovely a day is it there? Can't we love the most famous speech? We've got you a very nice car. Oh, this is a beautiful car. The last time I was in this car was in uh, last year in October, Rally Legends. A uh, tribute to Colin McCree, 10 years. Uh, it was amazing. I took my daughter and she said she'd never sit beside me again. <laughs> now, Graham, you've got, to, you've got to give her orders in this event. Yeah, I just told her speaking at the end of it. That's all. That's all we could hope. But looking forward to it. It's great. Lovely to have you here. Have a great day. Please take your more for the next car
horse behind. No, no, that's your, that's, that's, uh, that's your husband, that's, that's, uh, Skoda.